everybody. Okay, so today I think I'm gonna try to make a new garden bed uh, behind the garage here. That, that, uh, that scrappy bit of dirt right there. Um, I think I'm gonna, I'm gonna make it look beautiful. I have a lot of plants, um, like leftover plants in pots, um, either things that I've purchased or things that I've dug up and put in a pot to recuperate or things I've started from seed or cuttings or whatever. Um, and I've got pots everywhere, <laughs> stuff. So I think um, this, this bed is in an interesting space. It faces east. Um, it's in the sun for a lot of the day. So I have some full sun things like my Mr. Lincoln Rose that was drowning in the front yard. Um, I mean, that could go there. I've got some forsythia. I mean, I've got all kinds of things in pots. I think will be a good spot for them. So I have my little cart here filled with the brick that I'm gonna use. These here. Um, I do have some more on a pallet back there behind the man cave. Um, I wet down the soil um, so it's not rock hard. Um, and I doubt this project's gonna get finished today. It's like three or four in the afternoon on a Sunday. <laughs> it's not gonna happen today. I'm gonna line out my border first. So I'm gonna have some leveling to do to kind of get an even grade going. And then once I've kind of got it even, that's when I'll start and start bringing my plants over here and setting them out. It's going to take all day. <laughs> I'll come back when it's done. So the bed is pretty much done, I think. Um, so I have all of my pots from around the property and from inside the house. Um, hopefully those don't fry because they've been inside the house. It is supposed to be cloudy for a few days. It's not the best soil. It really is not. But um, these plants are definitely going to be happier in the ground than in their pots that dry out every few days because I don't water them. So, you know, and I'm just um, going to start placing things and digging holes and seeing where I like them. And then we're gonna sheet mulch it with some cardboard and some packing paper, stuff I've been collecting for a couple weeks. Um, and then we'll mulch it. Um, I don't know how much talking I'm gonna do because I tend to talk too much. But um, I think it's gonna look so good. I have my little my little ring around the fountain, the little solar fountain. See, it's like, bloop, bloop. you see, oh, bloop, 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 right there. That's so cute. That is so cute. Um, Oh, also I'm gonna be running drip. I don't know if you can see. Way over there towards the potage is that big pile of mulch. And I th and that's been sitting there curing for at least a year. We had those, those trees cut down and mulched over a year ago. So that is, um, I think broken down. Hello, <laughs> you're over here. I think that's broken down enough and mature enough um, to where it won't rob any nitrogen from my soil. It's like really mature wood chips. 
So I think I'm gonna use that in here too, just as kind of a filler, um, because there's not a lot of soil in here. The ground kind of slopes a little bit, um, slopes downward. So I've used the pickaxe to try to break away some of that soil that's up against the garage and bring it forward. Um, and I used a lot of it to make the uh, surround that the bricks are sitting on. See, the, the bricks are, are just sitting on dirt there. So I'm hoping all the clay in there will like solidify and then roots will get in there and it'll just like hold itself together. Wishful thinking. I don't know. We'll see what happens. Okay. I have talked for five minutes and 26 seconds. You may not see all that because I'm going to edit the hell out of this video. So. Okay, let me get to work. everybody so this installation has been in the ground almost a week now so hopefully everyone is uh, settled in getting their roots in I just wanted to tell you real quick uh, the names of the plants that are in this bed so here on this corner this is um, embers wish and so it has really pretty what starts out red blooms and then they kind of fade to a hot pink so this embers wish um, and the other one on the other corner there, these were in my pots on the porch. So they got really big and I'm so glad that I could reuse them somewhere. So they're doing great. Over here and throughout the bed, I have some Syngonium from the house. Um, these are cuttings 
of Syngonium, um, and they are doing really well. No scorch, no burn. Um, this is a canna lily. I'm not sure what color, because I have two types. I have uh, the red, and then I have a yellow with orange speckles. So when this finally flowers, I can tell you which one that is. And um, then I have a Pandora vine here. Uh, this is a cutting that I took off the main plant that died last year with the freeze. So I just put up a little piece of a cattle panel that was left over um, for it to kind of climb, climb up that. This is the variegated lantana called Samantha. And this gets yellow flowers on it. Super pretty. This was also on the uh, pots on the porch. So I'm, I'm getting to reuse some of the stuff that was still alive that I took out of there. Um, this is a lantana something gold. I don't remember the name, but this was also on the pots on the porch. And look, we have new growth. Yay. Um, back here is a forsythia. This was planted over on the side of the house by the air conditioner. So I just dug it up, replanted it. Um, and there has been no transplant shock whatsoever, which is crazy. So that's awesome sauce. This is looking real sad right here. This is um, <laughs> um, an echinacea. Oh uh, gosh, I forgot the name. Um, but it was on the pots on the porch and it was barely hanging in there and it may have went ahead and died. But um, I see some green down there. So hopefully it'll come back. Um, if this is powwow, powwow something. Wildberry, powwow wildberry. That's what that is. So hopefully that makes it. Um, this is my Mr. Lincoln Rose. Um, I do need to deadhead it, but um, I think it's gonna be so happy here in the ground. We're just so hot and humid here. This is in full sun until about 2.30 in the afternoon, then it's in shade, and I think it's gonna do great. I mean, there's no transplant shock or anything. Um, this is a much better place for it. And then this is actually a cutting that I took of my Sambucus Jasmine. Uh, when we put in the potage, I kind of wrecked that jasmine, getting it out of the pot. Um, and so the pieces that broke off, I've been rooting them in my office and they kind of haven't grown much. So hopefully now that they're in the ground out here, I'll start to see some good growth on that. Uh, this is the white trailing verbena that was in the pots on the porch. It's looking a little bit healthier now that it's in the ground and out of that hot baking sun. So we shall see. Um, back here I have a coleus um, that's been in my office for a long time. I do need to take that flower spike off so the leaves can plump back up. Here is a Camellia sasanqua. Um, this is a Shishi Gashira. It has a little tiny hot pink flower. It's very pretty. And I have that one at the back because it will get morning sun, but this will be one of the first ones to go into shade. And since it's a Camellia, um, it'll need a little bit more shade than everything else. Um, <clears throat> Dusty Miller here. This is a Pothos Enjoy that I had um, in the house. It was a cutting that I took. And it's been out here in like, you know, half day sun for a week and it has not burned at all. So that's amaze balls. And then this little strappy strap here is a purple iris. There's my drip line. I have another little strappy strap over here. And this is actually a Crocosmia. Um, I think it's like a Mont, Mont Brevia, Mont Breva. I don't know. I'll have to look that up. But anyway, it's uh, one that I got from my neighbor last year. Some free plants from my neighbor. And then here is one of my favorites. It doesn't look like much right now. But this is a canna that I got on clearance at Lowe's. Um, our local Lowe's didn't do the big 50% off sale like everyone else. But I did go to their sale rack. And they had a pot of this beautiful canna see all these um there's three and then another one in the front yard these are all split from one pot so i got the pot for like 10 bucks but it's just a beautiful color and the foliage is gorgeous so it looks really nice behind the fountain the fountain's doing great i put some stones in there to keep this little solar thing from drifting around i want it to stay center because when it's in the heat of the sun that thing shoots up probably a foot and a half. And then if it's over on the edge, all the water goes out onto the ground and that's not what I want. So um, here's some coleus. Um, these are cuttings that I took from the potager. That was ball. So those are there. This is matchstick bromeliad here. This gets a really pretty flower spike that lasts for months and months. 
uh, my sedum ogon, and then I have some Aztec grass, uh, variegated grass that gets a really pretty white flower stalk. Um, oh, I forgot the name of this. Oh, it has a really interesting name, um, but it's variegated. Well, some is variegated, some is not, but it gets a really pretty purple flower. I'll have to put the name on the screen. This is really pretty. And this is a cutting that I took and it was getting really long and leggy in my office, as you can see. Um, this is a Gara um, that I pulled from the front flower bed last year and I had it in a pot, mostly in the shade, till it got rooted in better, uh, re-rooted into that pot. And so it, there's a little bit of transplant stress here, I think, cause it was in the shade. Um, but hopefully it makes it because this Gara is really pretty and magical and along with the coleus will help fill in that area so that you don't see uh, the stones. And then here, looks like I need to spray this for spider mites. This is the, um, this is a white dahlia, um, but definitely I think I see spider mite damage. So I'm going to spray this when we're done. But this white dahlia was in the pots on the porch, the only one still alive, so that's there. Another Dusty Miller there. And then this back here is a gardenia that I rooted from cuttings that I got two years ago from Uncle Woody. This particular gardenia blooms more than once. Um, the other uh, mother bush gardenia that's over there, she only blooms one month from May until June and then she's done. Uh, this one here, Woody lived in a trailer park and there was a gardenia bush there that bloomed like periodically, like three or four times a year. So I have a cutting. I've kept it alive two or three years. There it is right there. This is some Mexican petunia. Some seeds had fallen in a pot, so it's got a little bit of transplant shock, um, but I think it's rooted in okay. It's back and fluffed up again. Here is more of that purple iris that I got for free, also from Uncle Woody. Um, this is more of that wild berry echinacea. Um, this particular plant I got on clearance at Lowe's. I think it was like two bucks or something. So it looks like the birds have already been eating the seed, seed heads. So that's cool. Another Lantana Samantha. Another Syngonium. Another Forsythia. So if you stand back kind of here, I have this big Forsythia there. And then back there, another Forsythia that'll get big. Um, and I think they'll benefit from afternoon shade. They're usually full sun plants. Here's a Dusty Miller that I've been doctoring back to health. I've had this one probably six or eight months. It was just sitting in a pot. Here's more of the Crocosmia here. Uh, this is more of that gold lantana that was in the pots on the porch. I think because all this new growth has sprouted up in the middle, I'm gonna go ahead and cut all this off and just make it a nicer, neater little ball there. Um, this is more of that Ember's Wish, uh, Salvia, beautiful. And then another canna that I had in a pot. Again, not sure if it's the red or the uh, orange with, or yellow with the orange speckles. And then this here is an azalea. This is one of the hot pink ones that was already here before I started. There was a hot pink azalea there was a dying boxwood <laughs> and then another hot pink azalea that was also like dead. This is the only one I reused because the other ones were dead dead. So this one's doing great. I do need to cut back some of this. I cut out all the footage of me battling with the fire ants, but looks like I still need to treat because they are trying to move into my garage. So I'll do that. Anyway, the plants are doing great. They're looking great. I love the little half circle. And the reason I didn't complete the circle is because I was hoping the coleus would kind of get really big and fill in. And that way you won't see that little blank spot there. Plus I only have three bricks left. All these bricks are what's left over um, from when we did our landscaping out front. So all the leftover bricks have been used except for three. So, all right guys, project done. I think it looks great, super happy with it. So, thanks for watching, bye.